5G networks will absolutely usher in a whole new age of networks and telecommunications, but where and when will we actually start to see the impacts to our daily life? What we need to start with is a bit of a comparison to what 4G was because you have to understand what the improvements are. And what's really different about 5G from 4G is the difference in frequencies. And there's actually three different bands that 5G can operate within. When you kind of compare that to 4G, 4G had a pretty tight range that they could operate in. And 5G opens that up, splits it into three bands. There's a low band, a mid band, and a high band and that high band is what you always hear talked about as millimeter wave and that's got some incredible speeds what you really have is a low band that really operates at very similar speeds to 4g and then you kind of bump up and you get almost to a gigabit per second of speeds in that mid band which usually is you know in practice what we're seeing is 3.5 gigahertz is kind of that mid band and then you jump up to that high band and you really get some crazy speeds and while the standard actually says 20 gigabits per second we're seeing things in the range of two to three gigabits per second as kind of the maximums on most of the deployed networks as of now now just to give you an idea of the speeds that we're talking about a dvd and i know that's kind of ancient for a lot of you but that's 4.7 gigabytes of data at the top speed of that 20 gigabits per second you would download a dvd in two seconds now obviously if we're not at those speeds you can reduce it but i mean okay it's a factor of six that we're gonna have to wait 12 seconds for now even at that two gigabits a second you know what that's still six times faster and the other thing that this does you know we talked about those three different bands and what that does for a lot of companies, the telecom companies, is it gives them more access to different frequencies and therefore more bandwidth. And this allows them to, again, transmit more data. And I don't want to go into all the details of all of that, but this is allowing them to put a lot more users on different frequencies, a lot more throughput on different frequencies, and it's allowing a massive expansion of accessibility to wireless communication. Now, before we go too far and we kind of move beyond frequencies, I think it's really important to understand one of the major impacts that we might see very quickly. See, in order for your at-home router to communicate at 2.4 gigahertz and at 5 gigahertz, which is kind of the newer wireless signals that, that you see in your home, you need two separate radios. So think about that in terms of the three different bands. Now, some of the good news is that lots of countries are just right away eliminating that lower band as usage at all for 5G technology. It doesn't really give a speed increase and so why use it I think is the the thought of a lot of countries in terms of their their frequency spectrum that they're making available for this. So they're kind of setting that mid band and the high band as requirements, but think about that in terms of your smartphone or your different connected devices. They will have to be able to communicate for the speed that they're looking for at those different frequencies and this might also get a little more complicated when we go in terms of international travel so that's one thing to watch over time is how device manufacturers are dealing with that now most people will sit and think okay the biggest component is that speed but actually the biggest component that will affect our lives is more about the latency so right now what we are seeing in practice is unfortunately not that big of a reduction but again the standard behind 5g creates an incredible reduction in latency so again latency is the time it takes from you to request a website to go to the tower and when you have to wait 50 milliseconds on 4g that can seem like a lifetime when we're talking about 5g at one millisecond to four or millisecond latency. So let me give you an example here of how that latency is such a big deal. 
I'm going to use the example of self-driving cars. Now today we have a lot of self-driving cars that are really contained within their own sensing capabilities and they don't really have access to other information in order to make the right decisions and we still see self-driving cars making a few mistakes here and there. If you fast forward to this reduction in latency down to one to four milliseconds from 50 today, well, that's a pretty big reduction in terms of being able to pass messages between two connected cars. You can go to that tower and have it come back down. This can be a really quick way to make two cars connect and avoid each other or a car and a pedestrian, which I think is even more applicable. Someone with a cell phone is standing in a certain location, we can have the car avoid that. Now there's lots of things that have to happen before we get there, but the technology is in place for those quick decisions to happen. Now there's one other component that's really important to the world of smart home IoT and adding all those other sensors and devices that we might use with this newfound low latency time and newfound speed. Well, that is how many devices can be put on a square kilometer. And that factor rises essentially times 10. It's about 100,000 for 4G networks and about a million for 5G networks. Now I talked about earlier on how we were already seeing some deployments of this technology and one of the more immediate impacts is actually the fact that telecom companies can now put out offerings for 5G cell service or 5G internet service for homes and we're already seeing this go on. I think this will be a major impact to rural communities that don't have great options for internet connectivity and I mean that around the world. These are things that can be deployed and especially within that mid band that's kind of what we're going to see provided for residential because the high band that millimeter wave it really cannot penetrate walls very well. It it can't penetrate a lot and you know those health topics aside that's one of the reasons that they're not so worried about millimeter waves penetrating the skin and causing all these problems that the conspiracy theorists are talking about now what will happen in your home is you know what today you've got a router down in the basement if you switch to one of these 5g plans well what you would have is probably a router towards the top of your home and it would then turn that 5g signal into wi-fi and i saw a number of these devices at ces as i was traveling around but they're really intended to sell to those telecom companies not not to the average user you can't just go buy one stick it in your home and capture 5g signal and start using so that's going to take a little bit to deploy but some of these options are already available with especially in the in the US with all of these wireless standards that are available to us in a smart home today there's not going to be a lot of a direct impact by 5G to our smart homes the fact is Wi-Fi is well positioned to be one of the main wireless standards and it really has all the same benefits as as uh, 5G in a lot of cases so we're not going to see that direct impact but what I do already see going on is that factories industrial settings commercial uh, settings are already offering to be on the front line to create IoT networks based on 5G technology and that means that they are going to be developing sensors and devices and all kinds of things that work within a 5G network and what that will start to do is create that innovation that we need in order to get new types of sensors and devices into our smart homes that will probably just use that Wi-Fi connectivity option and just have to be adjusted and reduced in complexity and reduced in terms of their requirements. So as those devices get turned into Wi-Fi devices, that is where you need to start understanding Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. Now 6E is actually one of the most important standards to think about and that's why I produced the video that is up on screen right now. You can go watch that, learn a ton about why Wi-Fi 6E is more important important than six and how it can be applied in your smart home. So thanks for watching everyone and of course don't hate, automate.